You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? It's the ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey, Star Wars fans, welcome back to another Vintage Collection action figure review. This time we're looking at VC321, the Mandalorian Judge, from based on Season 3 of The Mandalorian. Nice to see a new colour scheme of Mandalorian other than, you know, blue. <laughs> We've had a lot of blue Mandalorians over the last couple of years. Not complaining. Definitely spoilt for Mandalorians. Um, it's just nice to see a little different flavour here with the Judge. So there's a picture of him on the front. Now, obviously, just sort of looking at the figure, you know, they've had to reuse certain parts from other figures, other Mandalorian figures. And uh, in that sense, not everything matches up perfectly. The helmet is being used is a Boba Fett helmet where the helmet from the series is a Din Djarin style Mandalorian helmet with a rangefinder. Um, so instead of the sort of the silver around the T-visor, he's got the blue. Um, but you know what? It's fine. I think most of the other colours match. You know, I think maybe the armour plate on that side is a little different. But again, using what they've got to get a new figure out, I think the card back looks good. I hope we get some more sort of um, of the armour as sort of Mandalorian sort of faction. I think it would be very, very cool. So yeah, let's bust this one open, take a look. All right, folks, here is the Mandalorian judge named solely because he judges the little competition between Grogu and the little Mando kid. Um, yeah, for the most part, this figure is a repaint of the Mandalorian fleet commander. Um, yeah, with a different jetpack. Um, and, you know, this one itself is a re repaint of a few different figures. So they're using all the sort of same parts between Mandalorians, which, you know, honestly, it makes sense. Um, but, yeah, this guy, is it's cool to see that different colour. And, honestly, this is the kind of Mandalorian that is inspiring my own costume that I'm making right now. Um, I look forward to uh, documenting that a little bit as I get a little bit further on with it. Um, definitely like to sort of share my progress on that. But nonetheless, we've got the figure to talk about here. Um, yeah, I just I just like the sort of the ragtag hashed together different paint colours. You know, there's greens, there's orange, a little bit of blue on the visor, like I said from the, the video um, before, or the start of the video. The, the, the blue on the visor there is actually silver um, in the show and in the, on the card. But for whatever reason, they've decided to go with the blue. Doesn't bother me much at all. Um, See, obviously, got the, the Django Fett sort of style jetpack there, which is cool. I do like that. That looks good. The orange. It's got the green back plate. So, yeah, the jetpack obviously being removed with the accessory and you get the uh, blaster pistol here, which is the only weapon he comes with. You should come with a judge's hammer, perhaps. You know, order. Order. But yeah, the paint detail's really good. Really nice and clean. I'm gonna just zoom up a little bit so we can get a better look. There's a little silver, silver sort of nicks out of the armor paint there. Looks good. I like the weathering on the on the helmet. I'm not sure how much it's sort of standing out, but there's sort of some really nice sort of shading work around the top of the visor and on the cheeks. That looks nice. We've got the adjustable rangefinder there. And I like the I like the inclusion of the soft goods. He's got the sort of standard belt. Again, we've got some of that weathering on that sort of on that um orange thigh guard there, that thigh plate. That looks good. And a couple of mix mix and match different armor plates there on the boots. The knee darts. Go to the gauntlets, sort of one cream, one green, and then the orange hand plates. A little bit of paint runoff onto the fingers there, but that's not a big deal. Green. Green one there, that looks nice. So 
So he's looking pretty solid. I, I like the look of this guy. I like the, the sort of, the sort of cut of the cloth. You know, it's sort of a little bit just sort of shabby. It's sort of whipped together. You know, these guys are sort of just making their own. Like I said, it's inspiring my own Mandalorian build. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be looking, not the same color, but yeah, sort of going for that same aesthetic and that feel. Even the helmet there on the back, you can sort of see a little bit of that sort of dirt and weathering coming around the back. That looks good. Yeah, I like the, the armor as sort of clan, the children of the watch, you know, they're just sort of piecing their armor together as they can find it. And, you know, whether they're sort of going for certain paint schemes and they've got to mix and match things, I think that's really, really cool. I, I just love that look. And seeing all the different ones, probably more more so prominent in uh, in season three because there are a lot of them out in the open. We got the silver, well, sort of a just a silvery brown bronze. No, it's not bronze. Always the gun metal for the Beskar steel look. Yeah, always been a big fan of ponchos and soft goods and stuff like that so this is a, this is a good figure this one I'm, I'm really liking it so articulation wise he does have the ball and socket head we have ball hinges in the shoulders we have ball hinges in the elbows we have ball hinges in the wrists the left hand having an up and down hinge and the right hand having an up and down hinge so you can have that sort of yeah, there's no, no sort of in and out, so you get that nice wrist movement. Uh, we've got that torso joint there, that ball hinge, or ball, ball and socket, or whatever it is in there. I'll pull my figures apart to have a look. Um, yeah, ball and sockets in the hips there. We have a swivels at the thighs. We have a ball hinge in the knees, ankles, and a rocker joint in the foot as well. See, so, yeah, nicely articulated. I don't you expect anything else these days. They're, they're all pretty damn solid. We'll quickly do a bit of a peg test using the, uh, the acclaimed, critically acclaimed Kessel Run stands. Now available at KesselRunHair.com. We do them in packs of 10, but if you seek more, you can always hit us up and you know, we can we can do some bigger orders if anyone needs, needs more and we can do some bigger orders. You need lots. There we go. Really, really nice. Yeah, like I've said before, if you want to know a little bit more about the stands, come and check them out on kessrunhair.com. And uh, have a look at our little 3D print shop. And uh, yeah, all the information on how we came up with this stand is in in the site on the web on the website in the. Uh, in the item description. We've got some other bits and pieces like the 3D printed canisters, crates and boxes behind, as you can see. Just a nice way to fill a scene. If you get to paint, if you're skilled enough to paint them up, it can look really, really good on your shelf. So there we have the Mandalorian Judge. I hope you hope you enjoyed taking a look at this one. It's uh yeah, it's gonna look nice on the shelf, just mixing up with some of the other Mandalorians. Up there with Paz Vizsla and, and the armorer herself, mixing it with um, Bo Katan and her, all her crew. It could be very, very cool. Hopefully, we can see a few more different sort of variations of you know some of the night owl looks in in this sort of color scheme and all the different color schemes we get from sort of season three and the the, the armorer's covert of Mandalorians. So again, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you again for some more very soon. Until then, may the force be with you always.